Hello, fifth grade friends. Um, tonight, we are going to be doing unit two, lesson one. And you'll be setting up your notebook on a clean sheet of paper in your notebook. Um, this notebook will be graded at the end of the unit. Uh, so make sure that you have the lesson title and the unit and all in the upper left-hand corner so the, they can be referred to um, later on. So unit two, lesson one, is decimals as equal divisions. Um, if you have your class book with you, we will be doing um, page 39 and 40 tonight. And um, I'm gonna enlarge that here so you can see it. But we are gonna be discussing fractions as they are related to, and decimals and how they're related with one another. Um, some of our vocab vocabulary for this, for this lesson are decimal, tenth, hundredth, and thousandth. And we're hoping that this isn't completely new to you. Um, this was gone over in fourth grade, so it should be a little bit of a review. But fractions and decimals are special kinds of numbers. They tell the number of equal parts of a whole is divided into and the number of those parts that are being taken or described. Fraction notation uses a numerator and denominator to show a whole divided into any number of equal parts. And so we just left fractions and we know that to be true, that there's a numerator, a denominator, and a whole number. So if you look at number one here, you'll see that we have one whole here. Then we have that same whole divided into four equal groups. And then if we were to say one of those equal groups, it would be one-fourth. And over here, we have another whole with five equal parts. Three of those five parts would be called three-fifths. So that's just a review on the notation using fractions. But now we're going to be going into decimal notation. Decimal notation uses a decimal point to show places to the right of the ones place. The tenth place shows one whole, let's use a dollar for example, divided into ten equal parts. The hundredths place shows each tenth divided into ten equal parts. So I like the analogy of the dollar because we know that in a dollar, how many dimes are in a dollar? 10, I hear you saying it, there's 10 dimes, so a tenth of a dollar is one dime. So one tenth, one out of 10 equal parts. Here's our dollar bill right here, and we've broken it into 10 equal parts. This is the part of the video where if you wanna pause it and draw something, draw this into your notebook, this would be a great visual for your notes. Um, so that you can refer back to it if you need to. Um, you can pause it and go back to this and start whenever you need to. In this next one here, number four, it shows going the next step, going into the hundredths. So how many pennies are in one dollar? I heard it, one hundred of them. So one hundredth, you see this one shaded area right here, one hundredth would be one penny, or one hundredth of a dollar is one penny. So in this box right here, we have 100 pennies. Each of the tenths, or each of the dimes that we did in the previous picture has been broken into 10 equal parts. So, one tenth is what I've done here in this light yellow is shown you the fraction and the decimal relationship between one-tenth as a fraction and one-tenth as a decimal. So if we were to move into the thousands, you would see now we're going to take each penny broken into 10 parts. So this picture right here, where it shows the penny broken into 10 parts, 
<laughs> would be one thousandth. This little teeny tiny little speck right there is one thousandth of a dollar. So if that's if you were able to physically cut each and every penny into 10 equal parts, you'd have one thousandth of a dollar. So if you were looking at the fraction, here would be the one thousandth. And as a decimal, you would have one thousandth. So if you were to write something in your notebook to help you understand um, place value better, because that's basically what we're looking at here is the place value with fractions, you have your decimal point, your decimal point, then you have your tenths, you have your hundredths, and then you have your thousands. Now it's customary to put a zero in the ones place when dealing with things smaller than one. Number one, it gives us that alert that, hey, there's a decimal point there. Um, but it also helps us conceptually because it reminds us that the number uh, to the right of the decimal is going to be smaller than one. So let's kind of look using this right here, this little number line that we've made ourselves. Let's look at page 40 for a minute. And decimal numbers are read as if they were fractions. So that's an important part to know. So like, for example, number six says seven hundredths. So write each fraction as a decimal number and then say the number. So if I'm looking at hundredths, I'm looking at this one right here, this, this place value, and I'm going to put a zero to say, hey, there's going to be a decimal. And I'm going to put another zero to hold the tenths place because I have seven hundredths. Looking at six, seven, number seven, I have sixteen hundredths. So I have a zero as my placeholder, alerting me that, hey, there's a decimal. Then I'm going to write six. I'm going to have one tenth and six hundredths. Four tenths, number eight, is a placeholder and a four. Make sure to put, make sure that you're really careful about where you put that placeholder and where you put your decimal point. So I have nine tenths, zero, placeholder, nine tenths. Let's do number 10 is five one thousandths. So we have a placeholder to alert us, hey, there's a decimal point. We have tenths, we have hundredths, we have thousandths. You want that number to sit in that place value. So 54 thousandths, placeholder, decimal, tenths, 54 hundredths. Oh, I'm sorry, 54 thousandths. Placeholder, 81 hundredths. I want that one to sit in this hundredths spot. So I have 81 pennies or 81 cents. 409 thousands. I want that nine to sit in the thousands place. Two tenths. Three, notice I'm putting the zero in the tenth spot because I want that three to sit in the hundredths. I have three pennies. Sixteen thousandths. Sixty-seven hundredths. Sixty-seven cents, sixty-seven hundredths, sixty-seven pennies. 
Are you seeing any patterns there? Jot down something um, either in your notebook, and you can jot all of these down in your notebook if you don't have your classroom book. That's probably a really good idea. Um, uh, just so you get some extra practice with this. And we will, again, we will be going over this in smaller group tomorrow as well. So on these word problems down here below, I want us to kind of think of what the fraction would be and then write it as that decimal. So if you cut a lemon into 10 pieces, what decimal number would three pieces represent? So it would be three out of 10, so three tenths. The decimal of that would be, we have put the zero to alert, hey, there's a, a decimal here, three tenths. So what, three pieces of those 10 equal pieces. A bag of pretzels has, one, uh, has 100 pretzels. What decimal number would 28 pretzels represent? So 28 out of 100, that's 28 cents, right? 28 cents. What decimal would represent, what de decimal number would five pretzels represent? Well, that's only five pennies. So it would be zero decimal, zero, five. So five cents of 100. A beehive is home to 1,000 bees. If 235 bees are out gathering pollen, what decimal number do those bees represent? So I want it to sit, this five, to sit in the thousandths place. So zero decimal 235 thousandths of the bees were out gathering pollen. Um, what decimal number is represented by answering 92 of 100 test questions correctly? Well, think of it as 92 hundredths of the test you answered correctly. So we're going to be doing some more work with this tomorrow. What you need to understand is this Zero is there for a placeholder. Tenths, hundredths, and thousandths are translated very nicely over into fractions. And think of tenths as dimes, hundredths as um, 100 pennies, and thousandths is those 100 pennies split into 10 smaller parts. Looking forward to working with you tomorrow.